6.11, last lesson in the module is to go ahead and carry out that test. So the last video was us just setting up a couple of problems and now we're gonna actually run the test. Um, so we're gonna calculate, we're gonna interpret, interpret, and then of course, just like the justify and all that business as well, okay? There's a difference though in um, our Z statistic because we're going to use a different standard deviation, okay? And so our standard deviation, when we have, when we're gonna run a z-test for proportions where we're um, assuming in the null hypothesis that the uh, P1 and P2 are the same, which we will be, um, we use this formula for, um, for finding standard deviation, okay? Um, and again, I want you to see what that actually looks like on the formula sheet. So I'm gonna jump forward and then backwards, okay? On the formula sheet, there's gonna be a place where it says for two proportions, okay? Where we're running the test where we're doing P hat one minus P hat two. And again, that's, that's two samples, one categorical variable. And um, so we've got all these formulas, right? For mean, for standard deviation, but see here where it says when P1 equals P2 is assumed. Well, that's how we're setting up our hypotheses for all these problems. And so we're gonna be using this sample standard deviation. That's what this S means, that sample standard deviation. And so this becomes our formula um, and we're gonna get that P sub C in the formula um, with this formula. So it's gonna look a lot simpler when I actually show you, um, but I wanted you to understand what it looks like on the formula sheet on the actual AP exam, okay? So we're interpreting that p-value. Um, a formal decision explicitly compares the p-value to the significance. So if the p-value is less than alpha, my alpha disappeared here, um, then reject the null, meaning we're interested. Like if we go way back to the Twitter conversation, right? If we get our p-value less than that 5%, we reject the null, which is no difference between males and females. So females use it more, okay? Um, it's interesting. Um, if the p-value is greater than alpha, then remember we fail to reject. We don't, we don't say um, we accept it as true. We just fail to reject it. Um, the results of the significance test for a difference of two population proportions can serve as the statistical reasoning to support your answer um, in a question. Okay, so back to our STEM, and this is what we set up in case you have forgotten, maybe it's been a couple of days. Whoa, <laughs> I don't want you to see that. Okay, we're well, gonna see it anyways. Um, so let me, let me move me to a place. There we go, that's a good place. So remember that we had, the question was is like, are black and Hispanic females actually underrepresented in the STEM areas? Okay, so we had 12 out of uh, 300 in STEM uh, that were black or Hispanic females and 75 out of 500 that were black or Hispanic females. And we talked about how to set it up. I'm not gonna talk through that thing because we already talked through it, okay? And so what we need to be able to do here is we need to be able to make a normal curve. With a normal curve, we need a mean and we need a standard deviation, okay? So on my no normal curve, I'm using zero because I'm saying, I think it's zero, right? I think it's zero, but negative 0.11 actually happened. Is that rare? Is it so rare that I'm convinced? Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at here. So I need a, a standard deviation and you might be tempted to use that standard deviation that we used in the intervals but because we're assuming this is true, we have to use that um, P sub C value and that separate formula, okay? And so that combined P value is 12 plus 75 over 300 plus 500. Um, please don't ask where that formula came from because I, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I don't feel confident in my answer. So we get 87 out of 800, which is 0 .09, 0 0.109. And that is the number we use in both numerators and our, in our standard deviation formula. And from there, we could find our Z, go to our table, 
okay? Or we can go to the calculator, which is what I did. So I said, okay, I'm gonna use my normal CDF function. I proved I can use it by checking conditions. I found you a mean, which I said, okay, I think it's zero. See, right here, I think it's zero. And my standard deviation, which is this number right here, my lower bound and my upper bound lower because you know it goes forever and upper because that's where I want to stop um, and I and I colored to the left because it was less than zero right um, so that's why I colored to the left and I ended up with a p-value of 0 .0000008 <laughs> so it's pretty small it's pretty small it's shockingly small I would say it's so shockingly small less than five percent that I'm gonna go right ahead and reject the null hypothesis, which says uh, that there's no difference between STEM and non-STEM. So I'm gonna say, assuming there's no difference, that's important, assume the null. Assuming there's no difference in proportions of black and Hispanic females in STEM and non-STEM, there is a 0 0.000008 probability of getting a difference in uh, sample proportions of negative 0.11. Like, that's the probability that I would get 0.11, assuming all this stuff is true. And that's shockingly small. So shockingly small that I'm going to assume it wouldn't just happen by chance. And that, in fact, it's significant enough to say I'm rejecting that there's no difference. And I'm going to go ahead and conclude the alternative, which is that there is a difference. Okay. So you're gonna find that this test is quite similar to the, only, to the other test. The real difference here is that standard deviation formula. Everything else is pretty much the same. All right, one more time. That Michigan um, preschool problem, right? That Michigan preschool problem. I kind of recommend at this point that you go ahead and you um, pause the video and, and try to finish that problem out. Right, so we kind of set it up. Go ahead and try to finish that problem out. Um, I did add one. Do they provide convincing evidence? That's that five percent um, con um, condition. And then um, the second one is based on your conclusion to question one. Could you have made a type one or a type two error? Explain your reasoning. Okay. So pause. And now let's talk about it. Okay. So we already showed you the setup. So the plan, the state and the plan. So now we do the do. And here is our combined standard deviation formula, which again, I'm just using that uh, formula from before. Um, and I get a standard deviation of 0.082. And so when I draw my normal curve, uh, again, I'm always gonna use that mean of zero. I'm gonna assume no change. And then I'm going to check to see how often does this happen, right? How often does this happen? If I were going to find a z-score, it would look like negative 2.32, and then I could go to the table and check it. Um, so more than two standard deviations from zero is kind of shocking, right? More than two standard deviations. The probability of that happening is 0 0.0102, shockingly small, 1% of the time. I'm going to get a number like negative 0.19. So it probably didn't just happen by chance. It probably really is, you know, that we can reject the null because it's less than 5%. We can reject the null and accept the alter, uh, alternate hypothesis. So assuming there's no difference in proportions, there's a 0.0102 probability of getting this value purely by chance. So we reject the null. Okay. Based on that conclusions, uh, which error could you make? And the answer is you could make a type one error because we rejected the null. So that would be where the error would be is in our conclusion to reject the null. So um, now we could talk about consequences and all that stuff, like the consequence of, of rejecting when I shouldn't have is I'm wasting money on preschool or something like that. Um, but it actually asks for consequences in this one. So all we're doing is saying um, which one, which, what type of error would it be? Okay. Hope that was helpful. Good luck. You've got three cons, a quiz, and then when you finish all of that, um, a review formula sheet and then the test. So good luck guys. Bye.